Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast, it's been a week, so we're back with the Gameskeeper. We're discussing any news that's been games related in the last week, talking about EA's latest announcement for their games, talking about uh, new releases, and just basically anything that is games news related. So, yeah. If you're not checking us out on YouTube, please do. There is a video for this one, so it's worth uh, jumping over there and having a look. And uh, while you're there, it wouldn't hurt to subscribe, would it? No, it wouldn't. Cool. So, here we go. This is Cookie Cast, the Game's Keeper. And we are go. It's Friday, Saturday for the rest of you. It's uh, it's another week in the games world. We opened the cave, and out from the world of games came the games keeper himself, J.K. How the devil are you? Very good. Very exciting week. Much. Well, I would say more exciting than last week. Even though last week was the PS5 reveal, I feel that this week there's been more interesting stuff going on. Some of, us, funny news reports. some of us might say that that wouldn't be had, but that's just some <laughs> some people's opinions. I may or may not be one of them. I mean, I'm obviously sleep deprived because I didn't go to bed till early hours of the morning because I was watching silly EA live streams, which incidentally wasn't live at all. Uh, it was pre, pre-recorded, but you know, that's not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So yeah, um, but yeah, let's let's do it. I've got plenty to talk about, but maybe you should start this week because I always start. I think you should start. Ooh, yeah, since it's your podcast, I think <sighs> you should start. I believe it's team effort. It's our podcast. Okay. It's got your it's name on it. Cast. It's got it's your name on it. In big letters, it. So uh, you know, um, I've got something that I, I'm aware that you want to keep till later. Yeah. So. Talking of PlayStation 5, shall we talk about the PlayStation 5 price controversy? Uh, yeah, go on then. So, earlier this week there was a statement released from the previous head of Microsoft, I presume the game side of Microsoft, who made comment on the fact that the, the uh, Americans are speculating that the PlayStation 5 will be $600. This is dollars currently, but personally I don't think we'll be too far behind in the pounds area. Um, and he's, his statement was, $600, that machine's not worth more than 400 wow. So, That's it's... quite a bold statement. It is. It basically means uh, nothing. It's come from Sony's rival, PlayStation's rival, Microsoft. Um, it, it basically means very little, unless you look at it from... A Microsoft perspective, who have looked at the machine as a whole and gone, you better not be charging people more than four hundred dollars for that. So, as it's, a, it's an interesting comment because yeah. there's also an article this week saying that PlayStation and Xbox are not in a console war because they and they've said respectively they're racing in different directions. So he's kind of snubbed PlayStation, which kind of goes against that article. <laughs> Because if, if, if they're going in different directions, why would Microsoft give a fuck what Sony's price is? Especially since Microsoft also made that statement that I announced a couple of weeks ago, where they said, uh, it, it, for us, it's not about selling next-gen consoles, it's about giving gamers what they want. So we'll still be producing tons of content from the current generations. I think there is a, a lot around Microsoft Microsoft aren't telling you to go out and buy an Xbox X. X. Yeah, X. They're generally saying, if you want to keep your Xbox One, that's up to you. We will still give you the content, which doesn't feel like that's what Sony are doing. Um, Sony are very much behind, we've announced the PS5, go and put your pre-orders in now. You know, get get out there and get it. Um, there was a thing. Was it? In, I want to say Germany, 
Lidl decided that they were going to sell PlayStation 4s for the equivalent of $80. Oh, wow. Um, and people were queuing. They This was on Thursday. People were queuing from Tuesday till Thursday. Wow. And then the police had to be called. So that, uh, that, that, <laughs> that ended abruptly. Um, it's... We're very much at the back end of this generation. Um... What that yeah. means and what that looks like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, we've got something to talk about later on that I feel casts quite a deep, a, a big shadow over the back end of this generation. And I've got something else to talk about um, today, which is supposedly very similar to the end of the last generation of consoles. Okay. Right. Um, I assume you saw the Amazon article where the PlayStation 5 was available for pre-order at $300 for like two days and yeah. then it was taken off. Yeah, they said it was a dummy <laughs> article and yeah. somebody commented saying Amazon have never done a dummy article in their life. A, a dummy uh, sales listing. So yeah. why would they just so happen to do it for this? Hmm. Smartest move. <laughs> smartest move that Sony can make right now is sell the PlayStation 5 under what people think they're going to get it for. Yeah, It's the well, smartest I mean, thing they can do. I think we'll know uh, in a month's time. I would have expected, I would have hoped and expected that we, that we already knew. And the fact that we don't tells me a lot because I think that they were going to announce it probably at launch and the fact that they didn't is possibly to do with a bit of a backlash from their lacklustre launch announcement at the end of the day though if they want pre-orders they have to announce a price so they've got to they've got to announce a price at some point and it's got to be more than two days before launch because you're not going to get that many because say let's imagine that the price is what we want people might go nuts for it and if they've got hundreds of thousands of pre-orders and they can't ship the playstations because they didn't give their announcement at the time it seems odd to me but we'll see like you said um, we're at the back end of the generation so it'll be interesting to see where it goes by the end of the year mm. Mm. Yeah. what else did you have um i received a um gift today in the form of the last of us part two or ah. the last of it yeah, is part two um one of those things i was firmly in the camp of i am not buying that game it is far too expensive mm. um however you know not all heroes wear capes is what i'll say on that one and uh <laughs> okay. Mr. Amazon came came to my house and said, "Here you go, Mr. Cook. Here is a copy of Last of Us Part Two. There may have been a middle. There may have been, there may have been a middleman involved. Who could say? Um, so I've received it. Few things. Um, firstly, I turned it over. I was like, "Ooh, weighty." Turned it over. Looked at the back. Two discs. It's like, wow. okay, don't see that very often. That's interesting. Then I looked a little bit further on. Minimum system requirements. Minimum space requirement. 95 gigabytes. Oh, shit. 95? Mm. That's got to be the biggest game mm. this year. I had to delete two games to get to get that on on the system so that was that what i will say is this did have a day one update has to be the smallest day one update i have seen in a long time and i mean a long time it might have been around the one gig kind of area Uh, i think it said it was going to take 10 minutes to install I was like, That's impressive. Well, you should get on the WhatsApp group later because they're chatting about. Yeah. Because um, I believe Brother Keith is. Uh, he has just announced his intention, hasn't he? <laughs> to, to make a purchase, yes. 
So, something that was a little less comforting in all of this, I saw uh, this afternoon somebody had posted the uh, the main page of Metacritic for The Last of Us Part 2. Right. On one side, as we know the way Metacritic works, on one side, 95. So, for critic scores, that's out of 100. Mm, yeah. yeah, I know it's done... Can't Critics argue with that. It. It's been really good. Yeah, I've seen that. On the right, user score. Here we go. 3.5, and that's out of 10, as we know, mm-hmm. from 6,508 reviews. <laughs> I just so happened to mention that to Leanne, and she was like, Oh, that's nice to hear. So she wasn't best impressed on uh, on her purchase. Oh, oh, wow, that's. Okay. I mean, that might change, right? <laughs> I was a bit like. Tune in same time next week, folks. <laughs> but what I was going to say, and this is what I was sort of coming around to, do we remember? the end of the PlayStation 3. Do we remember when, at the very end, the last gasp of the PlayStation 3, we got The Last of Us? No, I don't. I I skipped that generation. I was on my Xbox the whole time. And The Last of Us was reviewed as the best game of that console of that generation. So much so it got a remaster and was immediately released on the PlayStation Mm -hmm. 4. I've seen reviews today saying Last of Us Part 2, the best game of this generation. So they're kind of following suit. Um, The Metacritic score would suggest otherwise, but we will have to see on that. I will keep people posted either through Gameskeeper or through um, the Darkest Timeline, but it'll be be weeks away. Uh, But yeah, we'll do that. What have you got for us with regards to the week, this week in games? So this, this week, uh, what have we got? So first off the bat, which I thought was quite funny, was 75,000 World of Warcraft classic users were banned uh, because they've been bot farming yeah. resources. So now they can't. I thought apparently yeah. there is a clause somewhere in the agreement that says thou shalt not use a bot to farm. Uh, and they have so that's seventy five thousand users. If you're one of those seventy five thousand users, <laughs> I mean that's that's just game. Um, so that that made me laugh. That's my first piece. Um, the next bit of information was that chapter two of season three of Fortnite has been released, and it's titled Splashdown. You can have an exclusive Aquaman skin, the Jason Momoa Aquaman. It's kind of cool. And it's also got like a, a village that looks like a scene out of Waterworld, just without Kevin Costner. So incidentally, I tried Fortnite for the first time yesterday. Because I was like, what's all the fuss about? Okay. I played three games. The first two games, I came second. The third game, I came first. Beat me versus 100. I don't really understand what the problem is. I do have video evidence. Uh, there is a picture that I posted on my WhatsApp group to prove that I came first. Uh, I thought everyone was supposed to be these super skilled, like, Battle Royale experts. I wandered in, I sat in a corner for 10 minutes, waited for this little circle to shrink, ran into the middle and killed the last three guys and was like... And I got 35,000 XP for that, so I'm now level 6 instead of level (laughs) 1. Seemed kind of shit, I have to say. (laughs) I was a little bit (laughs) underwhelmed. So, uh, needless to say, I probably won't be playing any more Fortnite because I thought I'd go out on a high um, because my my actual statistics look fucking amazing. (laughs) They look really good. Bart Simpson style, retire undefeated. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) So, that was that. Um, What else came up? Uh, There was... Oh, the PlayStation and Xbox are not in a console war, apparently. Oh, oh, and uh, this was the other one that was interesting. So, The Sims 4 got a patch this week, uh, because now The Sims 4 is available on Steam, so anyone that didn't have The Sims 4 before, you can get it now, it's half price. But the new patch came out with some interesting additions. 
One of them is, for some reason, your sims now piss fire. I think they're not supposed to. Apparently, they're not supposed to. What happens is they go for a pee, and the toilet catches fire. So, that's a bit of a problem. So, EA are working on that. The other thing EA added is firemen. So, in the real original game, way back when, in the original game of Sims, if you accidentally set fire to your house, the fire service would turn up, they'd put the fire out, and they'd say, don't be an idiot, buy a fire alarm. So, you did, and that solved it. But in this version, <laughs> because the, the patch isn't working quite properly, the firemen turn up and they dance while your house burns. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was just amazing. <laughs> um, that is basically the news this week that's interesting, those three or four bits of information. But I did watch um, EA's live stream last night, so I thought I'd go on to that before I go to the very final piece of cyberpunk information. That's going to be the, the closer for this week. So EA um, kicked off at midnight, finished at one in the morning. So what did EA tell us? Well... Apex Legends uh, is, become, is obviously available on the Xbox, as everybody knows. Uh, this is now available to pretty much everyone, and it's cross-platform on all uh, consoles. So if you've got your PC, your PlayStation, your Xbox, you can literally play your mates off on the PlayStation if you've got an Xbox. So that's really cool. And they're dropping a new uh, download, which is on the 23rd of June, called The Lost Treasure. So it's got some new characters, some new maps. They've tweaked the whole game, um, so that's shaping up to be a really good arena-style game. I don't know if you played it. Um, I've never I tried played Apex. it. I tried Apex on launch for a week. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a fun game. It's a good little combat simulator. It's generally 4v4, um, so it's pretty good. So that was one of their announcements. Obviously, they announced Madden and FIFA 21. Um, not many changes. Obviously, they're preparing it for a next-gen console, so they've tweaked graphics. They've you know, made a few improvements, but it's generally the same game that everybody likes. Uh, they're remastering the original Command and Conquer games, like yeah. way back when nineties versions. Yeah, um, they looked pretty sweet actually. There's an option to have the original cutscenes. Yeah, like yeah, the uh, the original nineties cutscenes is an option, and I'm like, yeah, it looks uh, it looks good. I think it'd be fun not? for nostalgia. I have to say, yeah. Um, it depends what price they want. Out. I love an RTS. I love an RTS. Me too. So. Me too. And that, I think it was Command and Conquer original, and it also included Command and Conquer Red Alert, which, if I remember, was the sequel. Yeah. Uh, back then. So that's being done. Uh, there was some Sims 4 news, because obviously they've gone across to Steam, but they've also got three new add-on packs coming out this year. So get your some audience ready to spend another $50 or whatever it is it's going to cost you to be a virtual person. Interestingly, the advertising they made for it was very much uh, about people who play Sims feel that they can just like be a totally different person and that if you've got a disability, you can play Sims and you don't really feel like you've got that disability. So they, they were kind of focused on that. Um, there's tons of new games coming to Steam. Most of the games are already available on consoles. I didn't list them all because there were too many. There was a little sweet little game called Lost in Random which is a little indie company, and it's a game that looks like a Timber and Nightmare Before Christmas movie. It's all like stop animation kind of stuff, and it looks really cool. Beautiful graphics, like ready in early 2021, apparently. So not finished yet. Uh, they've also got a game called Rocket Arena, which is a 3v3 battle royale. Um, I, I didn't really see the point of a 3v3 battle royale, but they seem pretty stoked about it. It's free to play, I think, but you will need a blast pass if you want to get like extra goodies. So it sounds like it's going to be a Fortnite-esque game, um, but instead of 100 people on a map, you'll have six. Seems weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but that's available from the 14th of July, and that's on all platforms as well. So apparently, apparently all EA games are likely to be totally cross-platform. So, you know, if you're on an Xbox or a PlayStation and you don't have one of those, but someone does, you can all link up. So that's kind of cool, that. It been wanting that. Gamers this, have been wanting that for years. This feels a million years too late. It does, yeah. It feels like we should have had this forever. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, but it's there now, so we should take advantage. 
And the big announcement of the night was Star Wars Squadrons. Yeah. So I'd seen, seen the trailer for this uh, a couple of weeks ago and was like, yeah, um, looks all right. Looks like a, you know, looks looks like a portion of Battlefront 2, but with spaceships. Now, I don't know if you ever played X-Wing or TIE Fighter in the 90s. Excellent space sim. Mm. So basically, the guy that's created Squadrons was a massive fan of this game. Apparently played it when he was a kid, played it when he was growing up, and wanted to recreate uh, those games as much as he could. So interestingly, the interior of the ships look exactly like the ships that you've used in X-Wing and TIE Fighter. They're like a copy-paste, just with nice new graphics. Um, it's going to be a decent single-player campaign. There is multiplayer campaigns. So one is a 5v5 dogfight, and there's also something called Fleet. Uh, fleet battles, which is also you have a squadron of five, and it's done in stages. So the first stage you do a dogfight, the second stage you take out some capital ships, and the final stage you have to destroy a star destroyer. Or if you're a tie fighter, you have to destroy uh, an, a rebel ship. So the game is set um, just shortly after Return of the Jedi. It drops on the second of October. It's got fully customizable ships fully customizable pilots. There are 50 com components you can add to your ships to make them faster, better, better weapons. And if you've got Oculus and the PSVR, the game is fully VR integrated. The, uh, there was an announcement from the CEO of EA today, and he said the game is designed to be played with VR. And I have to say, although you can get it on the Xbox, I would go and get something that's got VR, because it will look fucking amazing. And that, my friends, was the EA lineup. Not, not bad. It wasn't terrible. Um, like I say, Lost in Random looked cool. The squadron looks good. And obviously, if you're a Command and Conquer fan, then that's good. And EA Sports are being consistent. I mean, there's a big enough FIFA and Madden following that they can just knock those games out forever. I mean... So, it's consistent. I'm, I am one of those people. I buy Madden every year. And I curse myself <laughs> for it. I buy it every year. And, and this, this is one of those. This isn't something that, I'm, that I tout around often. But I recently bought FIFA. Because it was oh, okay. £9 on, the, on that massive sale there recently. Oh, yeah. And I was, and at the time, I was like, oh, I fancy playing a bit of FIFA. It happens about once every six years. I'm like, I fancy a game of FIFA. And then I went onto the store, and the first thing on the store sale, get FIFA for nine quid. I'm like, um, sold. Yeah, cool. I, I buy Madden every year. I trade in my current copy of Madden for the next version of Madden. Yeah, and I, and I think that you are with a million other fans do the same thing so i mean what why why fix it if it's not broken um, it, you know it's a winner for them yeah. ea sports they do you know the nfl they do the nhl they do the uh, the nba do they own um, the ufc one as well uh yeah ufc is all the fighting is, is ea as well so they, they've got all the major sports so you know why fix it if it's not I, I don't i don't blame them for that <laughs> And there are plenty of kids out there that like spending 500 quid of their dad's credit card money to try and unlock the nail the one. <laughs> I love those stories. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that leads me on to the final piece of information of the night, which is the cyberpunk announcement. So as you probably know, yesterday, which was Thursday, um, CD Project came online and said that Cyberpunk is delayed for another month. So that will give it a November 19th. Another two months. Oh, uh, wasn't it coming out September? September. 7th? Oh, okay. Right. Well, now it's November. Um, November 19th. Yeah, it was it's September 18th. Right. Um. I have quite strong opinions about this. Um, no surprises to anybody that actually listens to anything that I do. Um, I, I even wrote... Look, it's in... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. 
You can't see it. Look, it's a, oh, it's yeah, a block it's capital like letters. It's the first there. Um, not in block capital at all. It's in bold. Jesus Christ. Um, bold. Um, it, yeah. Um, the, there was a point where they delayed Cyberpunk by six months under the pretense of, oh, we're, we're going to polish it. And I said then, sorry, did you say polish it or did you say wait for the new console to come out? And then how many delays has it had since then? I mean, this is just okay, another well, in a long list of delays. Well, this will lead me on to the next article, which is about an hour old at the time of this, this thing. So basically, uh, CD Projekt Red have come online and they have said that Cyberpunk 2077 PS4 will get a free upgrade for PlayStation 5 before a more robust next-gen version down the line. So what they're telling you is that Cyberpunk PS4 version will be playable on PS5 as soon as the game launches. So anyone with a PS4 copy will be able to play that on the PS5 and receive a free update to improve the game visuals on Sony's next-gen machine. They've also said that um, if you also have a PS5 but you have the PS4 version, they'll kind of do the same thing but in reverse if you buy the PS5 version. So if the PS5 version of Cyberpunk comes out, you'll get like loads of extra visuals that will match what you have on your PS4, uh, but that's because the PS5 version isn't available until sometime mid-2021-ish. So the actual next-gen version isn't available until 2021. So there you are, for anyone that speaks Russian, just rewind that and watch it again. <laughs> I, I was about to say, I, that, that gave me a headache trying to work that one out. <laughs> right, well, imagine reading it. <laughs> so, but the long and the short is, um, it's you'll be able to play your PS4 copy of Cyberpunk on the new PS5, and you'll get a free upgrade, so the visuals look like it's a PS5 copy, even though it's a PS4 version. And the reason for that is because the actual PS5 version isn't ready yet. And won't be for ages because uh, they also said that multiplayer is way off in the distance and that any DLCs or stuff they were doing uh, hasn't even been developed yet. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, All right. This unfortunately falls in line with what I was saying after the PlayStation 5 launch announcement, which was very much around. Did anything they show look like it wouldn't run on a PS4? Apparently, inadvertently, CD Projekt Red have just answered that question. Yeah, well, they also made another interesting point on that article that I just read. Was that they expect you to be able to play Cyberpunk on the, at launch of a PS5. So what they're, what they're saying is that the PS5 would have definitely launched by the time Cyberpunk comes out, which is November. What I, what I think is that CD Projekt Red are potentially trying to do a, uh, a Grand Theft Auto on Sony. That's what it feels like. Yeah, they're going to say to them, we want a slice of the cheese. Yeah, yeah. We, want, we, want, we want a percentage. The, the G, this sounds exactly like the GTA V. Um, you can have an enhanced version for free if you've already got it on the PS4. Because apparently things aren't actually going to be ready for the PS5. Yeah, because, because yet yeah, again, <laughs> we're in a situation where we're being forced to accept a new console when, without any things. When the generation that we're in now hasn't been stretched in any way. Well, you know, what they're basically saying is that they're going to launch a console without any content. There's no games. There's, there's, there's no, there's nothing new, and yeah. I think ultimately they know that they're trying to get money for old rope. Basically, they're like, here's a load of games you've played before. Here's nothing new. Here's a console that, I mean, let's face it, some of the memes that have been coming out for what the PS5 looks like. My favourite has to be the uh, the PS5 router. Yeah, with the envelope wrapped around it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sorry, but. 
it's an ugly machine. Do you remember when you saw the the announcement of the PS4 and what it looked like, and it was like, sleek. fuck me, that is a sleek machine. To be honest, um, I, I don't actually mind. I, I don't. I think it looks. I mean, the one. It, does look like a, it may look like a router, but I don't have that. Kind of thing, so the one like, thing they need to do before release is they need to say available in a variety of colors nobody wants a white machine nobody wants a white machine most people don't all i can see all i can see past this screen is a wall of black because I've got like a post pro gamer um, controller for the Xbox, which is white. It's ghost white. So, on that terrible disappointment, that wraps up <laughs> this week's podcast. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, you know, comment and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Let let us know. Please, please prove to him that a white console is games. The games keeper versus the cookie <laughs> in the battle yeah, of can, nobody like, wants a white console. This is going on the Facebook right after this podcast. <laughs> Get a poll going. Do one of those yeah, Instagram yeah. polls where people press the button. <laughs> yes, Get a poll do. going. <laughs> so yeah, I I mean. I've I've gone through my list as as we saw my list was very short and uh, you've updated us with all of the news so uh, I have. cool beans there we are have your stuff a good weekend viewers yes. listeners and across um, the globe. I mean we'll be back next week who knows what news yeah. we'll have next week who knows who Maybe knows we'll tell you one piece of news we will have whether the last of us part two is a three point five or a night yeah. or a ninety five. <laughs> I have to say, I'm looking forward to that. You better play it. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. See you later. And I'll, I'll leave it there. Yeah, cool. Bye. Okay. So there you go, what do you think of that? Another one done, another week of game news gone, and another week of game news related to you guys. Isn't that nice? YouTube watchers, do make sure you're subscribing. We've got the uh, subscription drive going, so if you can help out in any way, that'd be super cool. Tell a friend, especially if that friend's into games or uh, any of the other podcasts we do. Everybody jump over to thecookieass.com. Uh, check us out over there. You can send uh, send us something social media related or drop us an email. Uh, standard rules at the moment. If you do send us an email, I will read it out on the show so there that's it for this one until next time i'm going to say bye and i'll see you then bye